Hey everyone, how's everybody doing? Kendall here with LawnBot.biz. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, just checking my audio, getting things set up here. I uh, want to double check and make sure. All right, all right. All right, there it is. Okay, cool. Um, if you're tuning into the stream, thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm trying to keep up with it here. Uh, the intention of this this stream uh, was most importantly, I was thinking, you know, I used Facebook ads the last three years to grow my company. It's literally the lowest cost per sale, cost per lead that you could be doing. And... Um, I get constant questions from folks, friends in the industry, especially the ones that are spending tons of money on direct mail uh, with how to run Facebook ads. There's a lot of obscurity around it and how to set up a campaign. So I'm actually going to be taking you uh, step by step in um, exactly how to run these ads uh, and, um, and set one up and uh, launch it. So. Um, if, if, if you're busy and, and you're on the go, I have people messaging me today saying, hey, uh, you know, 7 p.m. doesn't work for me. That's fine. Um, this will be recorded and saved to the LawnBot uh, Facebook page. Um, so if you can't tune in for the whole thing, that's fine. Um, but if, if you're joining us on the stream, it's, I'm going to keep it nice and short and sweet, nice and quick, um, and literally step by step how to build a campaign, a lookalike campaign, um, do a lead gen ad within uh, Facebook ads, and then um, I obviously won't be able to have one go live in front of you, but at least it will be enough of the footwork for you to take and then ultimately go and run your own uh, Facebook ads. So I'm going to share this out. If you're on the stream, I'd, lo I'd really appreciate if you could like and share the stream um, and uh, hopefully help out any other lawn care, uh, green industry, service industry related business that – um, would benefit from uh, running Facebook ads. So I'm going to share this out in a couple places, and then we'll uh, we'll dive into the uh, the nuts and the bolts here. So uh, just hang tight, and um, we'll get this thing rolling. Uh, let's see here. So I share it out. Share. Cool. So again, if you're uh, hopping on the stream, uh, my name is Kendall Hines. I grew a lawn care company here in Grand Rapids, Michigan from zero uh, to 2,000 customers in about six seasons. Uh, we didn't have money for direct mail uh, when we were small, so I had to be really resourceful. And I also can't compete with True Green uh, for pay-per-click. So we had to make... Um, our dollars go further, and the way to do that was, hey, where are the, where's everybody's attention? The, Gary V talks about this all the time. Where's everybody's attention? It's on their phones. It's within Facebook, and I'm gonna spend my dollars wherever the lowest cost per lead and cost per sale is. So that's what we did here. Um, so I'm gonna dive in here, and uh, I'll get started with the step-by-step -step, um, tutorial here on how to run lead generation ads within Facebook. So here, uh, obviously, uh, this is the Facebook um, news feed here. Everybody knows what, <laughs> what this looks like, right? So uh, right here, you got the notifications. Um, and then over here, there's a little drop down, right? So you want to click on See More. And then Business Manager. Now, this Business Manager is completely different from what's inside of Facebook. So this business manager is like the hub for your business, right? So you're going to find, um, if you don't have a business manager, just simply Google Facebook business manager, and you might have to create an account pretty quick. Um, but once you're in business manager, so there's two parts to it. Uh, the, there's ad accounts within business manager, and then you have to tie a page to the ad account. So that's kind of one step to this and why people kind of get confused by it because they think that they're if you boost a post on Facebook you're running Facebook ads but that's not uh, the most logical way to spend the money um, on Facebook so this is assuming hey you have a business manager account and you've attached your page to an ad account um, here so within uh, the business manager here this is uh, you know the screen that you hit every time 
Um, this is where you kind of uh, begin to set up your ads. So we're going to click Business Manager here. Uh, and you'll see this uh, slide across thing. It says All Tools. And there's all these options, right? It's tons of, of places to get lost um, uh, within the uh, Business Manager console here. Um, so what this video is about is specifically is how to run a lead generation ad campaign inside of Facebook, meaning um, we're going to upload a list of all the emails to Facebook, and we're going to tell Facebook, hey, Facebook, go and find everybody on Facebook that looks like everybody um, with these emails. And why that's so powerful, it's like only paying to show your billboard to people that are 95% inclined to buy your services so it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel and um, you know the results have been pretty astounding uh, for for my company um, I'll show you quickly here uh, these this is a sales report of our year last year um, and as you can see uh, let's see here oh that's page two let me go to page one So Facebook ads, uh, 268 customers for $102,000 in Facebook sales. Now, mind you, uh, we hired a lot of CSRs last year, and there's a category up here that says none, 329 sales. I would have to think that some of those uh, were Facebook ads. So we need to do a better job with our team on um, <laughs> flagging source codes, as I'm sure uh, everybody is always trying to do. So. Um, total last year we had 1,300 sales, as you can see here. Um, so a pretty big percentage of our growth uh, came from these lead generation ads within Facebook. And again, just to clarify, you know, these weren't the boost. If you see boost on your normal feed, it is not those. Um, it's not those ads. Ads. It's uh, it's specifically the lead generation ads within Facebook. So step one, once you're in the business manager, you have your ad account set up, um, you're in this page. First thing we're going to need to do is create an audience. So we're going to click on audiences here and uh, it's going to load this screen. Um, <clears throat> see here, it's loading, it may take a moment. Uh, boom, here, here it's going to show you all of your audiences. So these are some from my past campaigns. Um, as you can see, there's diff many different audiences that, that you can make um, within Facebook. You can um, create an audience of people that watched your videos. You can make an audience of um, people that went to your website if you're using a Facebook pixel. So when we run retargeting campaigns, um, we actually place a pixel on our website, and then uh, we run an ad basically saying, hey, anybody that hits my website, and they would know that by the pixel, a little cookie, uh, we want our ad to show up in their, their Facebook feed. So if you've ever been on LawnBot's website, you've probably seen my ads after that. That's uh, retargeting. Um, so we're here inside of the audiences screen. Um, you see this drop down right here? So I have three different ad accounts, um, one for my lawn care business, one for uh, you know just generic ads I run, uh, and then one a personal ad account as well. So... Um, you can have as many ad accounts as you want, uh, but keep in mind, uh, Facebook, after the uh, all that election stuff went down, they're pretty um, strict on the ad accounts. And before you can do a custom audience or a lookalike audience, your account has to be active for a few days, um, and they have basically have to approve you as a uh, as an advertiser. But once they do that, you're good to go, and, and you can go about your business. But um, so once we're in the audiences tab, we're going to click on create audience. First thing we're going to do is a custom audience. So we're going to upload a custom audience to Facebook. And it's going to give you all these different options right here. It's going to be, uh, you know, your website activity via the Facebook pixel, as you can read right there. It could be a customer list, um, creating an audience using your existing customer information. Um, that's the one that we're going to want in this case, but there's all these different ones. So I encourage you, if... Um, if, if you'd like to learn more about this, there's tons of YouTube videos. Uh, there's tons of, of – if you just Google search lead generation ads on Facebook, you can learn so much about um, placing these ads. There's a lot to it. Um, but essentially, once you're here, you click on customer list. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back. <clears throat> Let me open up my other ad account here. 
Um, so we're going to create audience, custom audience, customer list, and it's going to give you these three options. You can in import from MailChimp, uh, use a file that doesn't include LTV, or use a file that includes lifetime value. Now, if I had more time in the day, which I don't because I'm a small business owner and I'm growing um, two companies, I would probably focus on the LTV uh, just because the more data, the better. Um, but this is literally the quickest way to get up and running, uh, what I found. So you use the file that doesn't include LTV. Um, and here it, it shows you all of the um, the options that, that you can be that you can um, have Facebook find people by. So obviously the more data the better. Um, Facebook wants it in a pretty specific format. So typically what I do is I just do an, a CSV file with a um, email column and then a phone number column and uh, first name and last name. But um, for for speed purposes, if this is your first one, um, what I would recommend doing uh, if you have real green um, would be Go to your Real Green dashboard, um, select all of the all of your actives, cancels, pitch not solds, and maybe even marketing if, if you have emails somehow in the marketing space. Um, but definitely the actives and the pitch not solds, right? So you you would export that to a CSV file, copy all of the emails, and then upload them to Facebook. Um, then you'd click next, and you would have to name the file. You name the audience. And then it would begin populating. So usually when you create a new one, um, it says populating right here. And what what it, that means is what I typically like to do when it says populating is, hey, let it sit for a few hours, um, maybe half a day or so, and then come back to it. You don't have to wait, but you know I kind of like I like seeing the numbers. Um, and I'll show you in a second why you know you want the numbers to be rectified in there. But anyway, so at this point we've created a custom audience. Um, and we're going to cr create a lookalike audience, uh, reach new people who are similar to your audiences you already care about. You can create a lookalike audience based on your, the people who like your page, conversion pixels, or any of your custom data. So <laughs> if you followed the election, this is what they were talking about. What they were doing is targeting influent people that were able to be easily influenced um, via uh, look-alike ads and they're incredibly powerful right incredibly powerful because you're only spending money to show your ads to those people who are gonna likely buy your SERP they're gonna buy lawn care from somebody so wouldn't you want your ad showing to somebody who's more inclined to buy um, and then you're here uh, so it says select your look-alike source um, so these are all my sources here and then I have other sources so value-based sources um, people that have visited the website, uh, but you're going to click on uh, other sources and you're going to go find your custom audience that you just created um, on the last step. Uh, and then select audience location. So in this case, for everybody, it'd be United States. So everybody in the United States who looks like the people in um, that custom audience that we just created on the last step. And then we have select, select audience size. Now, I've done a lot of research on this. Um, the bigger the percentage, the wider the net. So when you're doing lookalike, when I'm spending marketing dollars, uh, I want it to be directed. I want, it, I want to go at it with a, as the old Joe Cusick line, I want, it, I want to hit it with a scalpel, not a shotgun, right? So um, we're going to turn it down to 1%. This is going to find only the people on Facebook who are very, very, very digitally alike, the people that you just uploaded. Um, from that point, click Create Audience. Uh, you can't duplicate, look alike. Uh, okay, it's probably because I already used that one before. Anyway, once you click Create Audience, it's going to say, okay, populating. As you can see here, I've been testing different percentages to you know, kind of see what the conversions are. Um, but this is really, uh, it's worth the time learning this platform and going in and and clicking around here and, and just figuring it out, um, in my opinion, I, just because the cost per sale and cost per lead on these these sales are so low, and it gives us an opportunity to compete where True Green isn't. You know, True Green isn't running these ads on Facebook, and it really gives us a good opportunity as you know small and medium sized companies to um, you know spend money where they aren't and uh, dominate instead of trying to compete with them on PPC uh, and paying those huge uh, commissions to be able to place those ads. Uh, especially when you know Trigger is spending so much money on dominating PPC. 
So uh, we're going to carry on here. Now that we have a lookalike, we're going to assume now uh, we've, we've completed the custom audience. We built a lookalike audience, and now it's time to build our ad. So uh, we're going to open this, uh, all tools, ad manager. There's a lot of buttons in here. Um, you know, 80% of them you don't need to use. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning into the stream. If you're watching the stream, uh, drop a comment with any questions, um, and I'll come back to them at the end after I kind of get through my tutorial with um, how to set up ads. Um, so here, uh, this is my personal ad account. As you can see, I, lots of trial and error. Uh, I'm a big believer in Facebook. If you go out, you know, go to a hockey game and look at everybody while they're on their phones. They're they're in their phone. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. So that's where I want to be as as a as a marketer. Um, in a uh, in a company, so um, I'll go ahead and show you one of our ads that we ran in the spring. Uh, we this was an, a uh, a lead generation campaign we ran in the spring. Um, so you click on it here. Uh, if if you're starting from scratch, you'd click create. And it's going to ask you campaign name. You can call that whatever you want. We'll just call it lead gen ad demo. Um, auctions, not important. Campaign objective. This is the big part here. You want to click lead generation. Okay. Um, daily budget campaign optimization. Now, these buttons can be super scary, uh, but they're not. Uh, just like anything else, if you know enough about it, it's, you can do uh, uh, do it no problem. So I would recommend turning this off, campaign budget optimization, until you get better at running your ads. Um, ad set name, uh, we'll say demo ad, and ad name, lead demo. Awesome. So you're going to click save to draft at this point. And you're going to be able to, uh, within here, create a new ad. So within this page here, there's three parts to an ad. There's the campaign, the ad set, and then the individual ads. Um, the campaign is, can consist of multiple ad sets. So it's more of just a way to organize your, your ads manager. Um, and then a ad set can contain multiple ads. So you can run eight different ads under one ad set with the same budget, and it will automatically spend your money on the ad that's performing the best. It's really, really a cool thing. Uh, Myron Ritter in Florida has a quick question. How does this integrate with LawnBot? Uh, so this integrates with LawnBot. Basically, when somebody clicks um, get, get my quote on Facebook, I'll show you this here in a second. When they click get my quote, they'll land right on the bot, and you'll get all their, their Facebook information directly sent to you. So it's really a cool thing. Um, and this is all done via data in the cloud, APIs. It's really cool, this new kind of generation uh, we have going on here. So this is the – so getting get back to the campaign, building this campaign. We got campaign, ad set, and um, the individual ads underneath it. So we're going to go into ad set here. It's going to load the ad sets. You're going to see your Facebook page here. You're going to see the budget. You're going to see the audience definition right here, um, and then you go down, and there's some there's some demographic data, so ages, genders, detailed targeting, uh, automatic placements, and then all this optimization and delivery. So obviously there's lots of, as you can see, there's lots of buttons to do this right, um, and you can spend a lot of money if it's not... Uh, not optimized correctly. So I would leave dynamic, if this is your first ad, leave dynamic creative off. Um, and you can see here on the right, it says audience definition, potential reach 210,000 people on face or 210 million people on Facebook. So I would assume that's everybody that's, that's in, uh, you know, the United States who has Facebook. Um, and then your daily budget. So you can pick how much you want to spend. I would recommend, um, spending at least $50, uh, a day in the spring by the way don't do this like right now but in the spring um, try fifty dollars a day if that's working really good I'd pour some on we spend upwards of two hundred dollars a day in that power window so we don't spend money on ads all year we just spend it we in the time when we know people are buying lawn care right that frenzy of spring so 
Um, and we, we actually don't set a, an end date on our ads. We just run them and we optimize as we go. Uh, this is the part where you get your custom audience. So um, I got an ad here. Uh, we'll take the 1% lookalike. Uh, let's see here. Let me grab a different lookalike. That might actually give us some some good data. Cool. Awesome. So uh, as you can see, this changes in real time. It's giving you estimated daily results. So my daily reach with spending $50 a day would be 1,000 to 3,000 people and generate 17 to 54 leads. But bear in mind, that's for all of the United States. We're going to put in zip code filters here, which, which is another reason why these ads are so freaking cool. Because you can go in and just target three or four zip codes and just dump money on those zip codes if you're trying to grow in a specific market. So these are really exciting. So let's turn this up to 200 bucks a day and see what kind of uh, reach we get. So we bumped this up to 200 bucks a day. You can see the reach just shot up. Now we're hitting 3,000 to 11,000, 52 leads, 251 leads there. So, that, so that, that's that's really what the daily spend does, right? Um, it really jacks up the reach and ultimately the leads. But obviously, if we don't want to spend, we don't want to uh, to market all over the United States unless we serviced all over the United States. So um, now we're going to edit the location. Um, and let's see. People living, there's four different options here. There's people living or recently in this location. We probably wouldn't want that one because that would include people traveling in and out of the city. People living in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling in this location. So when we go to trade shows, I actually, before I go, I always geofence the venue um, and target people traveling in this location. So GIE, Real Green, um, we geofence and geotarget those with these these two options here. But um, for lawn care, obviously we'd want people living in this location. And then what's beautiful about this is is you can add your zip codes that you service in 49508, 49525. Now we have like 50 zip codes, so I'm not going to enter them all. But you guys can kind of get the gist of the process here. So as you add zip codes, it's going to add more and more people um, to this estimated daily results. And then you can kind of prime yourself on how many leads to expect. Now, that's all premised based on um, the content that you use in the ads. And the content is literally the most important thing beyond the targeting of the ad. So literally, I can run an ad with, with two different and this is why there's a, they do A-B testing within the ad platform, but you can run two different ads, completely different content, and one performs 10 times better than the other one. I don't know why that is, but maybe a certain image or video resonates better with somebody than um, another person. So I'll give you one that, I'll show you one that performed really, really well for us. We call this the 8 West ad. Every spring we go on this TV show called um, 8 West. It's like a morning you know, talk show, uh, and in my market, it's a sleepier market, about a million people in the metro area, so everybody knows this show, and they think we're on the news when they, um, when they see this ad, uh, and this is an ad, it, now it has, it's three years in the making to figure out this formula, but it's a really good formula, and I'll see if I can zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better, let's see if it zooms. Oh, yeah, we're zooming here, folks. We're zooming. Okay. So that's 200%. Zoom. Whoa. Okay. Let's let's try this. So this is... Whoa. Uh, let's go out a little bit. So this is an example of uh, an ad that just crushes it for us. Um, and basically, uh, as you can see, 43 shares, 54 comments, and... 275 interactions. I mean, this is just, you can't beat this type of impression uh, on Facebook. So as you can see, it's a nice video of me, the owner, in the ad, family owned and operated. Um, you know, you can't, you can't think of a, a better ad than this. And basically, Basically, the ad is me being interviewed about lawn care, what makes your company better, you know, 
explain that we're family owned and operated and literally uh, this ad in the spring will generate 10 to 20 um, leads a day for us within Facebook. Um, so this is the ad part of the actual ad. The second step to this is the lead form. Now, a lead gen ad within Facebook is one of the most powerful things, um, but it takes a lot of time to set up. But I, in my opinion, it's kind of worth the the setup time. So at this point, um, you know, our ads built, all of our copies done on it. Um, as you can see, you, you edit the video here. You can change the thumbnail. You enter the text in the headline description, um, and then you connect a lead form to it. This is the part where you connect the lead form. So you can see all my different lead forms I have <laughs> experimented with over time. But um, let's just, for example, uh, build a new one from scratch. So when you click Create Lead Form, and this is the most important part. This is why lead gen campaigns are so powerful. So when you create a Facebook account, what is it asking you for? It's asking you for your email. It's asking you for a phone number now, two-step uh, verification. So Facebook already has all of your data, as we all know. They have all your private data, your cell phone number, your email, what pages you like, what posts you comment on. So that's all in the algorithms, and that's what they're selling to people like us, the advertisers, which I will gladly pay, pay for that all day. It's like I said, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, but anyway, when they click Get My Quote, they're not leaving Facebook. They're not going to a landing page. You want them to interact on the platform that they found you on. That's what's so deadly about these. They click Get My Quote, Get Quote. This pops up the full screen, and then you're able, uh, you can pick here. This is where you set it up. You can click More Volume or Higher Content or higher intent, which means you're getting double opt-in, which obviously we want volume in lawn care. We want volume in our business. Uh, so we click that. And then you can up, upload different headlines. You know, get your instant quote now. So you edit this form. You can pick the questions that are asked. Email, full name, add a new question. What I like to do is obviously uh, phone number, zip code, and uh, street address. So as you can see, it's going to ask the customer for these or it's going to auto-populate these fields with their email, their full name, their phone number, their zip code, and the only thing the client has to enter is literally their address. So two seconds of entering their address, they click Submit, and um, then you are sent their lead data. Well, there's some setup on the back end around that, but for the most part, that's what it is. Uh, the red flag caveat to, the, to all this, um, when you're setting up the lead form, the privacy policy is very important. So you need to have an active privacy policy on your website that's connected to your Facebook page. So uh, Ben in uh, My Best Lawn, shout out to you, just joined the stream. I'll use his company for an example. So Ben with My Best Lawn, um, well, dot com, we'll say, his privacy policy needs to be hosted on that same website that's attached to his Facebook page. And that's important because we need to let you know we need to let the client know um, how we're going to use their data. And Facebook is also uh, you know with them being in the press lately surrounding privacy and data, that is also very important. So that you need to the the big thing is you need to have a privacy policy on your website, and you it's why it says required here. You need to link to that privacy policy. Um, so that clients know how you're going to use their data. In my company. We text, we call, we do everything. So that's all included in our privacy policy. We make sure that we're in compliance with the TCPA, which is very important. Um, so then you can uh, pick the redirect screen uh, after they click Submit. Uh, you can click View Website. What we choose to do is um, link them up to our lawn bot, and so then go into Instant Pricing. So literally three taps, and they're already in process. A boom, you know, there's your house. There's your uh, the street view of the house. You live at this address, correct? Yes. Do you want to see your pricing or customize your program? They pick and then they go through some options and um, and go from there. So this is the lead 
uh, form within within Facebook of how you set this up. So there's two steps to that. That's actually setting up the ad and creating the lead form. So that's the two steps right there. Once you feel like you know you've done everything, Facebook will let you know uh, if there's any errors within the ad. Um, typically, Facebook doesn't like too much text in the video or the photo. There, it only allows 20% of text because so, they're trying to keep the user experience really rich for the end user. Um, so Facebook will let you know, as they are right here, hey, fix one error in the ad, miss, missing lead form. Your lead ad requires a form. Please create it below. You know, so you have to pick your, your lead form or whatever one you want to use. Once you add it, it's going to get rid of the error message. And um, once, you're, once you feel you're ready to go, uh, you click publish. And then it goes, it, what happens is your ad goes into the review status. So with, um, you know, Facebook ha coming under so much pressure, they try to automate this as much as possible. So they actually have like AI going through your, your ad and seeing if there's any big major red flags of why it would get declined. Um, but if there's not, typically they get um, approved within 24 hours. Uh, so you know, don't think if, if you create the ad, it's going to be, you know, live within a couple hours. It's usually, you know, a good hour or two of building a good ad, um, you know, creating the lookalike audience, and then um, getting your ad approved is another 24 hours. Once it's approved, um, your ad will start showing in the feed. And then um, when people uh, click uh, get my quote, their lead form will be sent to a CSV file on your your Facebook um, uh, pages, like your your page, your lawn care page, and then the client uh, would be able to land on um, wherever you'd like their website, your lawn bot, whatever it is. So uh, we've used these ads in my company the last three years, and uh, huge believer in them. Mostly because we initially did them because we didn't have money for direct mail when we were first growing the business. We had like 300 customers. Um, so we, we looked into these alternative platforms, and it turns out, in my opinion, they're literally the best cost per lead and cost per sale you could find uh, as it relates to lawn care. Um, Justin, how much more effective do you – Justin, on the questions feed here, how much more effective do you think a video is compared to a picture for the ad? You know, Justin, it's interesting. Um, I helped Myron down in Florida set up an ad. I uh, I do our own video ad. I personally, I like the video, um, especially you know when you can get somebody who has been on the news on there, so it creates that social proof. We literally had clients saying, "I'm calling Wood TV8 and I'm reporting you because my dandelion didn't die, right, or whatever it is." So. Um, these people that click on the ad think that we're on the news, uh, even though we paid for the spot, which is kind of interesting. But um, I would say experiment. You know, our second best ad literally was a side-by-side -side image um, of a, a sh shitty lawn, right? Bare patches, yellow, looks so ugly, next to an after picture. And then it was like, it, it just had our logo at the top. And then it was like, it just said green, thick, and weed free. Get your instant quote now. You know, family owned and operated for 20 years here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So there's people that are getting the ad. Number one, boom. There's a before and after. Boom. Family owned and operated. Boom. 19 years in business. Highest rated company in Grand Rapids. So if I'm in the market for a lawn care service, which they should be, if seeing as how it's a lookalike ad, um. There's a very good possibility uh, that they're going to click on, you know, get my. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you click on get my quote? Um, if if you know you're in the market for these lawn care services, so uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, that's pretty much the step by step, um, the high level step by step. I know I kind of probably glanced over some things. I'm probably not the best teacher in the world, but I wanted to at least bring you, um, you know, what I've done uh, on with Facebook ads and how they've helped my business grow. Uh, what really kind of got me going was I, I attended a marketing seminar 
you know, down in um, Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're talking about pay-per-click, and they're talking about Yelp ads, surprisingly. Uh, nobody was talking about Facebook ads, um, which was troubling to me because there's – think about how often you're on Facebook. You're swiping through, and you're like, I'm having I'm having a baby at the end of February. And um, it's amazing once we started Google searching all this baby stuff, all these cribs and baby text started showing up in my Facebook feed. And I'll tell you what, some of it's pretty helpful because I, it saves me the work of having to go Google this stuff. And you know, I've we've actually ended up buying a few things um, through the Facebook feed, or at least started that research around it. So, I mean. All you have to, I mean, clearly if you're watching this stream, you're on Facebook, you know the power of Facebook. Um, I'm not selling anything uh, on this stream today. I just really think it's, it's if you're going to spend marketing dollars before you go and spend a bunch of money on, uh, you know, especially if you don't, ha you know, if, if, you're, if you have five grand to spend on marketing this year, um, spend it on Facebook ads. That's my, my, uh, my belief, um, you know, direct mail is going to be super expensive, and with 5K, 10K, uh, y you don't have enough gunpowder to really make a dent with direct mail anyway. Most people that do direct mail campaigns are spending 20, 30, 40, 50,000, hundreds of thousands of dollars doing direct mail campaigns. Um, do that at, at, at some point, I think it makes sense, right? At some point, you're going to need to do everything home advisor ads. Direct mail, Facebook ads, PPC, knocking on doors, telemarketing, home shows. Like you're at some point you're gonna need to do everything. But I think if, if for a marketing budget wise, I think this is the best cost per sale and cost per lead that you could ever have. I, it takes a little bit of effort on the front end of learning the platform and setting up the ad. Uh, but I think you're rewarded bigly, hugely on the back end with, with the results and the low cost per leads and and cost for sales. Um, you see, this is just from one of my ad accounts here. We were spending 200 bucks a day in that power window, 231 leads, 106,000 reaches, and 500,000 impressions. There's only a million people in Grand Rapids, all right? So um, this didn't capture all the people that called the office that saw the Facebook ad or, you know, didn't capture my other Facebook ads that I was running as well during that time. We only spent 11 k on this campaign. So, Al Neville, uh, do you push a discount or just a catchy header? Um, you know, we've we've tried it both ways. We tried like get your first application free, half off the first application. Um, I would say A B test it. Um, create a campaign, create an ad set, and then create two separate ads under the same ad set and see which one performs better. Um, and then after a week or so of running the ad, you should kind of know which ad is performing better. And I dump all the money on that one ad and just push all the dollars behind that ad. Um, it's hard to say, right? Cause when, when I call them and get them on the phone, um, you know, they don't even recall the ad. They're like, yeah, I think I did that yesterday. I'm like, what? Like, how do you not remember what you did yesterday? So, but they're like, oh yeah, I am, I am looking for lawn care. So it's, uh, it's a cool thing. Um, next on the pipeline, uh, down the pipeline of kind of what I see in the marketing world, where I think is a good time, place to spend the money that people aren't spending money yet, which gives your, you a little bit more bang for your buck. I think next door ads are going to be really, really big. Um, we're still looking into the platform and experimenting with it. But Facebook ads, man, there isn't a better return on your investment um, for uh, for running ads within Facebook. So um, let's see here. If there's any other uh, comments, feel free to drop them in the uh, the comments below. Here's some of our uh, again. Here's some of our sales numbers, or at least one of the pages uh, from this year. So um, you know, 2019. Uh, 329 sales of uh, none, source code of none. That means my CSRs were lazy. And they, uh, this is another reason why I built LawnBot. Because uh, in the overwhelming time of the spring, when they're trying to enter 15 sales at once, 
Um, people make mistakes. They're human, right? How do you get rid of the human error? Well, you get rid of the humans. Um, so 329 sales here. You can see all of our home shows. Even home shows from back in 2015 converted for us. That means we probably hit them on a cancel list or a pitch not sold list. So not the best, but not the worst either. Uh, and then you can see just Facebook by far is the highest uh, highest customer count. Almost 100,000 in sales. Uh, that was allocated from just Facebook. I think at least another 100 is sitting up here in the none category. Because uh, the CSR staff didn't do the best. Didn't do the best. But we'll, we'll get them there. Um, and as you can see, page two here, there's about, you know, 1,300 sales. So, yellow pages, one sale on the year. All right, folks, there we go. <laughs> Man, I miss the old days. When I was like eight years old, the, the mantra was, uh, the mantra was take out the biggest yellow pages ad. Wait for the phone to ring, right? So that's all I have for you for the tutorial. I'm going to probably chop up this video uh, so it's a little bit more concise, maybe without some of the commentary, um, and repost it to the LawnBot uh, Facebook page. But I just wanted to come give you some value on the Facebook ads. We, we run them in my lawn care company. Um, we run them in LawnBot. So for LawnBot, what we do is we also do a lookalike campaign. And we crush it. Like literally, we're driving. I'll show you um, on the B2B side uh, the results that we're getting on um, on our lead gen ad on Facebook. They're pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. So right now, we're spending 20 bucks a day. On a lookalike, on a lawn bot lookalike, this is just a simple ad, 10 seconds, kind of rolling through, um, and it's generated 204 leads on Facebook. Insane, right? To a $2.28 cost per result, 35,000 people's uh, people on impressions, 18,000 reached. I mean, that's just nuts. So, but what I love most about this, about running my own ads and not relying on an agency, is I can go in and look at all the analytics anytime I want. And I can see, hey, what's performing good? What's not performing good? Where's my money being spent? Where should I set, where should I put it to better spend it? Um, everybody jumping on the stream or just join the stream now. I'm going to repost this. Uh, it'll be, it will be live on the LawnBot page. If you have any questions, feel free to um, email me at kendall at lawnbot.biz, lawnbot.biz, B-I-Z, kendall at lawnbot.biz, and I'll uh, see if I can answer it for you. If you're a LawnBot customer... Um, feel free to reach out. I'll help you actually set these up. Big believer in this. It's just some of the value. I, th I think that um, it could be a huge win uh, to be able to spend money where other people aren't. And um, so hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful Monday night. It's cold here in Michigan. It's starting to get nice and chilly. So um, uh, let's see. Ryan Shiplett dropped in um so would you recommend fencing geofencing a local expo yes actually uh i highly would um so the the lower or the the smallest radius that you can get down to within the facebook um platform is a mile so it worked out really good for the gie and um yeah uh, andrew i'll help i'll help ryan if you get stuck but man he created the app himself that was freaking awesome um <laughs> easy easy uh so this it only gets down to about a mile on the geofence so yeah ha it has to be within a mile but then what else what also you can do what i did for the for example the real green solutions it was down at opry land um that whole campus is about a mile radius so that worked out pretty well but then you can also add detailed targeting so i'll show you actually my geo target uh from from nashville it was sick I mean, I looked at my Google Analytics data, and there was like 600 link, uh, not link clicks, but website visits over that week, or this past week. So here's my geofence from Real Green. Uh, we spent 400 bucks. It was $3 a link click. So that means um, 111 people clicked the link and went to the site. Uh, 30,000 people saw it, um, and we reached 9,324. 
So 111 people clicked on that geofence link or that link. And what's cool is as long as you're using Google Analytics, you can see on the back end of where that source is coming from. So between the Google Analytic data, the Facebook ad data, you can make really informed decisions on where to spend your dollars and try to make all of your stuff work at once. But the biggest thing is is making sure it's all there for the power window in spring. March, April, May is when you want to be dumping that money on the uh, the ads, whether it's PPC, Facebook ads, Nextdoor. Um, you know, we stop spending on ads at the end of May. Now, I've always wanted to do a mosquito campaign, but we've just always been so busy from the spring ads that we haven't had to really do anything. So, um, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for tuning into the stream. Uh, if you have additional questions, feel free to message me or email. If you're a LawnBot customer, like I said, I'll help you place these ads. Uh, it's a nice little perk um, that I can help you with as we uh, continue to ship these bots and um, and have them go live. So, hope everybody has a good night. Ben, you get rid of humans. You're damn right. Because I hate paying salary. I hate paying overhead. It seems like every stage of growth, I'm hiring more and more overhead. I was sick of it. I was putting in all this extra work, and I got to go hire another person for 40 grand a year to answer the damn phones. So, it was like a messy. I was like, dude, how can I get rid of a couple people? Um, so, automate, automate, automate. Big fan of automation. And I think we're only going to see it more and more as uh as time goes on so good news is is i don't see any automated lawn spraying happening soon um i wish there was i wish a drone could go out and just spray the whole grass right would that be cool but uh i guess time will tell hopefully we see that in my lifetime but we're, we're at we're at we're at about an hour here i'm gonna go home here time to hit the road and uh hope everybody has a great night and uh, we'll see you soon if you're going to Loncology. We'll see you down there in Georgia. We'll be down at uh, Loncology, and then we're also attending the Lawn and Landscape Tech Conference. I won't be there. My CTO will be there, um, Eric Alberg. He will be down there demoing the product, answering any questions that you have. We'll be down at the Lawn and Landscape Tech Conference and Loncology at the end of the month. Can't wait to see everybody, and uh, hope everybody has a great year this year.